Just bounce to this. Hey, how's it going, everyone? My name is Brandon Clements, and welcome back to our part six of our hologram series here on Glassian. Today, what we're going to do is jump into After Effects and start setting up our render passes. So let's go ahead and do that right now. Uh, you can see I got After Effects. This is just the, uh, you know, kind of bare bones. So what we're going to do is uh, go to our directory where we have everything at, and I'm going to start dragging everything into this window here. And as they come up, I will rename them accordingly. So I'm going to do that right now. I'm not going to have you guys watch because uh, there's quite a few passes. So uh, let's meet up once I have everything renamed here in our project. All right, so we have all of the different passes in here that I have um, drug into this window from the Explorer. So if you guys don't have a whole lot of experience with After Effects, um, to rename, all you have to do is just hit Enter on your keyboard, and then you can start typing. So uh, if we select all these guys, and let's hit Control-Alt-G on the keyboard. Oh, actually, I think we have to do it one by one. So Control-Alt-G will bring up uh, the interpret footage window, and I'm just going to hit 24 so that our uh, assume frame rate is 24 frames per second. Um, and then you can see all the attributes show up here in the project window. Uh, floating point plus, so we're in linear. Uh, you can see it says linear light, so we're in linear color mode. So uh, if you don't use Control-Alt-G, you can right click and just say interpret footage main. Okay, so let's change everything here to 24. All right, so um, some more things we need to do. Uh, right now, our whole project is in 8, bit, uh, 8 bits per channel. What we need to do is change this to 32 bits per channel, and we need to be in linearized uh, working space so that all, all of our color information comes through properly. So um, what we can do now is just grab one of these guys. Uh, let's take our emission and drag it and drop it into the new composition. Uh, what that will do is create a new comp here in our window. So this is what we're going to be working in. Um, let's go ahead uh, and rename this to uh, render layers. Okay, that's the comp that we're in. And let's grab all of our layers and drag and drop the render layers into the folder icon. And then we can call this uh, hologram underscore render layers. All right, so let's start adding more render layers to our uh, sequence here, or our composition. Let's go ahead and just drag everything. We already have the emissions, so we're going to drag everything here, and uh, let's turn them on one by one and see what we need to build our uh, our look from. So we have the emission, uh, which is just a... Um, if you turn on this guy, you can see the transparency. The emission is just what was emitting light in Octane. And then we have the ambient occlusion. So we can solo this one. Uh, you can see that there's a little bit of darkness around here, um, around the edges. Uh, but for the most part, it's basically white. So we could use this um, additively. So let's go ahead and we'll just shut these off and go up one by one and change the render layers. Uh, direct diffuse. We want to go ahead and change this to add uh, our indirect. Diffuse, we are going to change that as well to add. And then let's take our reflection um, indirect and direct, change those both to add. Let's also come into, uh, let's grab our wireframe and kind of drag this to the bottom here. Um, so right now it's just going to be, let's go ahead and solo it. Our wireframe is uh, pretty dark so we could we could add this again on top um, or we can kind of use this in a way to subtract and add some more darkness back into the uh, image so let's put our emission on top and we'll go ahead and set the emissions to add and uh, the motion vectors position and z depth um, if we Let's go ahead and hide the post real quick. Uh, these three layers right here are more information um, type of render layers, so we'll keep these off and use them when the time actually comes. So uh, the uh, post effects, again, we could set this to um, add. But the one bad thing about post is that it kind of takes away our alpha. So um, instead of keeping it in this comp, we'll add this on top of our um, our other comp that we're gonna be making. So uh, for now, I think this is okay. Uh, let's see our ambient occlusion. Let's not set this to add. Let's just go ahead and use that um, 
as multiply. So let's take our render layers and drag and drop it into the uh, new composition. Um, and what that will do is uh, pre-comp our render layers. Uh, let's call this new comp, let's call this, uh, let's just call this hologram. Okay, and we can rename our render layers to something that's more descript like render layers. Uh, I like to name pre-comp um, after the ones that basically if I hit tab over my window, uh, you can see that the render layers pre-comp is a pre-comp of the actual hologram. So if you hit tab over this window, uh, the viewer, then you'll get this kind of cool tree. So um, one thing I want to do is I'm going to duplicate this three times. And one thing I want to see is, yes, we do have transparency. I want to kind of add a chromatic aberration effect. So um, let's go and add that. Let's do a channel. And we can do a shift channels. And let's just shut off um, everything except for the red. We'll copy this effect, control C. Uh, go in here, control V. And we just want to turn um, the green on for this layer. Okay, so the green will be full. And let's go ahead and paste again the effect and just turn this on for blue. And then if we change these two comps to uh, difference, we'll get our image, RG, we'll get B, uh, G, and R. So like R, G, and B, like red, green, blue is stacked up here. And uh, if we change this to say like 100.2, or uh, the size again to get to this you just hit s on the keyboard 100.1 uh, we can start to uh, basically stretch this effect out so we kind of get more like a chromatic aberration um, so let's say we can make this more pronounced 100.4 and like 100.2 you kind of want to make this subtle uh, but like if this was like a hologram or you're looking at it on a display maybe the color banding is a little more obvious um, in this chromatic aberration effect. Okay, so we could go into our uh, render layers pre-comp and we could drag out our uh, post and we could add that on top of it now so that uh, it's not affecting the uh, the background as much. So if we wanted to have a different color background, let's say we came up to layer and uh, create a new one. Uh, just for example, if we had like a red background and we place that underneath and then we had the post on top of it then you can see that the color change would show up of course we don't want a red background we want something like uh, let's just change this back to kind of black and then we can come up here and generate a ramp a gradient ramp we can change this to radial and swap the colors out and then just uh, bring down the end of that ramp and then change the uh, brightness down okay so really low so we kinda get this uh, a little bit more kinda haze look to it and then we could also add another layer on top of this so let's go ahead and name this one uh, vignette and to add a simple ellipse over top we'll just double click and that gives us a mask that we can set to subtract and let's hit M M, -M on the keyboard and uh, bring up our feather controls and just kind of feather this out and then we can hit T on the keyboard to bring up the uh, opacity and we could change it to like I don't know something that looks pretty good 75 if this mask icon is getting in your way you can deactivate it here and uh, you can kind of get this really soft out of focus type of look so um, if we want to go ahead and catch up this animation and see what it looks like, we can do that. We're going to get some banding in the preview, uh, but I'll show you how to get rid of the banding when you actually uh, render this guy out. So we get a little bit of the wireframe showing up, which is pretty cool. Um, we also get the subtle movements coming up, and uh, we can add our motion vector pass and use an effect from um, Real Smart Motion Blur to make this look even better make it look like it was actually captured from a camera so let's just kind of preview our animation so it's looking pretty sweet uh, let's go ahead and do what I was uh, just saying so let's add a new adjustment layer 
and we'll call this RSMB. Real smart motion blur. Uh, this is a plugin that I bought. So uh, Revision has a plugin. Uh, we just want to get the RSMB Pro vectors. And if we go back to our uh, pre comp, we need to grab this guy here. So we'll just copy and paste. And this will be our motion vectors. Let's uh, select it in the actual effect. This is going to be looking at our motion vectors layer. Okay. So right now we have max displace, uh, the vertical scale, X and Y. Uh, I'll go ahead and turn this on so that we're running on my GPU. Uh, so this is an overall amount and then how far is it going to be displaced? Okay, so you can get some pretty interesting looking effects um, Let's go ahead and just make maybe say this is displaced like um, I don't know We can try like five two or five pixels and then you can adjust the amount here So let's say two two point or point two five. Uh, this is all just based on taste So this will just help us kind of add some more motion blur and comp if we would uh, want that But we already have motion blur in our render, but maybe if it's not enough we can bump it up in post So that's what uh, that allows us to do Okay, so it's kind of stuttering on playback, but you can see it kind of gives more of a uh, silkier type of motion to the uh, to the render Okay, so what else could we do? Um, let's add uh, another adjustment layer and let's call this one uh, noise and what we want to do is just add something uh, simple to this so let's go to uh, noise and grain and let's add a let's just do an add grain okay so let's look at the final output and we'll change our preset to let's do this first Kodak one and we want to make sure that it's monochrome and let's set the uh, intensity to like let's say 0.2 and the size to like 0.1 okay uh, maybe 0.1 and 0.1 let's see what that looks like okay so it's very subtle I don't even know if you guys can see it on the screen recording but this is going to help us um, with the banding when we actually render this out so we have like the glow uh, from the post effects and uh, this grain is going to help us uh, cut that banding out when we change it back to a mp4 uh, so maybe let's let's do point oh five it looks a little too intense um, on both of these okay so that's not super noticeable um, so that's going to help us a lot let let's add a another effect to these three render layers so let's select them and then go to our uh, this is another tool that I have bought it's called real glow I'll, I'll try to leave a link to, in the description to all the stuff that I've bought and that I like and use um, so this real glow is really awesome uh, we can enable a tint so we can tint this like that kind of uh, ice blue color maybe somewhere around there change it to uh, let's see light mix I like this a lot it kind of looks more like um, a light emission. Let's turn on our gamma correction and repeat edge, edge pixels. And then we can bump up the glow radius and then also lower the intensity. Okay, so let's say like 0.1 or so and set to add. Um, so you can add that on top of uh, these three layers here, but I think what I'm gonna do is just allow me to add another adjustment layer and we'll just call this layer glow okay so we'll hit enter and we'll add those glows so we'll uh, select all of these guys and just kind of let's just cut and paste back here and get rid of these here okay so we deleted them on the three layers and now we just have an adjustment layer and that way we can kind of just scale this back based on the opacity of the adjustment layer okay so um, you can tweak it to however you would like I think I'm gonna leave it at um, let's see what we have it at like 20 percent all right so I think um, that's gonna about wrap it up for this lesson I'll be sure to leave a um, render of this I only rendered it out at 720 but I'm going to leave the render at the end of the video so you guys can check this out. But uh, thanks so much for um, 
sitting here in After Effects with me and uh, going through and adding these render layers. I'll leave a link in the description to the plugins that I was using that I had paid for. Um, but thanks a lot, guys. If you like this video, definitely leave a like. Uh, if you have a question, please leave it in the comment section below. Um, and definitely subscribe to the channel. So we'll be seeing you guys in the next one. Take care.